hello everybody so the today's lesson the topic for today's lesson is micturition and it's a part of the collection on excretory system and it's me iftikhar khan so you can always follow me on un academy okay and i'm an mbbs student from aims that's all you need to know so let's get straight to the topic what basically is micturition what basically is micturition it's basically the act of passing urine so till now it's the act of passing urine so till now we have seen that first of all we have seen how the anatomy of the human excretory system is we have seen how the urine is formed we have seen what hap- what all happens in the kidney then after passing from through the kidney the urine passes through the ureter into the urinary bladder which is with where it is stored until it's voided out through the external urethral meatus so that's the whole story so now we'll see how it's excreted or how it's removed after the after it enters the urinary bladder so first of all it enters the urinary bladder and uh, till the urinary bladder is half full there is no signal then after the urinary bladder is half filled the detrusor muscle start to stretch and specially the trigone the urinary bladder trigone as i had uh, taught you before it has stretch receptors on the detrusor muscle and especially more on the region of the trigone so these stretch receptors when activated send a signal to the central nervous system they send a signal to the central nervous system and from where there is voluntary motor command on where and when to void the urine only when it is socially acceptable in case of human beings so the extern as the external sphincter is voluntary it's under the more direct motor control of the cns and it's only and it is in by the and it's open only by the will of the person and not vol- involuntarily another thing is the reflex action that's the sympathetic and the parasympathetic action how they affect the act of voiding of urine so the fact is that the sympathetic system leads to relaxation of the detrusor muscle and the contraction of the internal sphincter so what it does is it it prevents the act of urination while the parasympathetic stimulates the contraction of detrusor muscle contracts the detrusor muscle and it relaxes the internal sphincter so it, el- it helps in the voiding of urine from the body so in parasympathetic you can remember s l u d d s for salivation l for lacrimation u for urination d for defecation so these are the main factors main things increased by the parasympathetic system that's the thing but voiding of urine is under direct control from the cns and it's under the motor control and it's not involuntary it's voluntary which is very necessary as a social norm so that's about it some facts about urine we form around 1 to 2 liter per day of urine every day and it it depends on the hydration status so normally it's around 1 to 2 liters per day obviously it's yellowish in color if there is any deviation from the color if it's dark yellow it may be due to some problem or only due to some dehydration 
if there's the urine is red color in red color that lead that signifies hematuria which is present in various trauma and kidney f- conditions very ca- various conditions like nephritis glomerulonephritis and other conditions the ph is slightly acidic and the odor is ammonical odor so these are some facts about urine which you need to remember so what is urine made up of so urine is basically made up of water most of it is water more than 90% around 96% is water 2% urea 96% water 2% urea and we excrete every day 25 to 30 grams of urea per day and there are traces of uric acid creatine ammonia ammonium ions sodium etc etc take care in mind in normal conditions no glucose is excreted out i repeat in normal conditions in normal human beings no glucose and no proteins are excreted out of the body of a normal organism so that's what you have take to take care in mind keep in mind that no glucose and albumin any glucose or albumin or any other protein or any other any rbc is a uh, not a normal finding it's an abnormal finding in urine so i think that's all i have for this short shortish lesson so that's all i have thank you everybody thank you peace